Governments across the globe have been telling us all about how switching from fossil fuels to green energy is the way to go. They feed us the same old alarmist lines about climate change and absolutely insist that we have to switch to electric cars, solar panels and wind energy so that we don't all fry. And by the way, all of those green solutions I just mentioned are backed up by fossil fuels, but that's an inconvenient truth that you'll never hear about from the government that used the green energy narrative to win elections. But this was all just talk until government policies started being affected by climate alarmism, and now we're starting to see the results. You've heard of energy poverty. That's when households pay such high rates for their energy sources that they're actually barely or not getting by at all. We've seen this happening in Ontario. Remember when Justin Trudeau toured the country and a woman from Peterborough, Ontario pleaded with him to change energy policy and described how she had to work extra hours because her hydro bill was higher than her mortgage? Well, a new article in the Financial Post highlights stats from the European Union that show 128 million Europeans are at risk of being energy poor. That's a quarter of the population, and that's just an average amongst the EU. In Romania, it's estimated that 40 to 50 percent of people live in energy poverty, and in countries like Ireland and the UK, those rates range between 20 and 30 percent. This comes as no surprise and should serve as a grave warning for Canadians. The UK was the first country to adopt aggressive emissions reducing strategies like phasing cheap accessible coal out by 2025 in exchange for more expensive options in order to meet the unrealistic aims of the Kyoto Protocol. So not only is energy already expensive there, but 20% of electricity is still powered by coal and those costs are going to keep rising. How familiar does this sound? Rachel Notley and the NDP are doing exactly the same thing. You think things got expensive with the carbon tax? We haven't seen anything yet. The energy poverty stats aren't the only concern that the EU highlighted. What they call excessive mortality rates are occurring, especially over the winter, as a result of energy poverty. As that same article in the Financial Post outlines, 17 of 26 EU member countries find this such a problem that they have energy poverty defined as an explicit concept in law now. Examples from Europe and Ontario should be enough for governments to take a step back from these policies that are plunging citizens into poverty and are slowly bringing us back to the dark ages. They say they care about the environment, but what that really means is that they care about pushing out the fancy new narrative to get votes, and they obviously care about those votes and election wins more than they care about human suffering. How progressive. For the Rebel.media, I'm Holly Nicholas. Have you heard about our fundraiser for the Spear Kids yet? We're trying to raise a million dollars for them after their dad was killed on the battlefield by a convicted terrorist Omar Cotter, who Justin Trudeau and the Liberals just made a multi-millionaire. Please check out the campaign at SpearKids.com for more details and to donate. And for those that already have, thank you so much for your generosity.